Did I mention it's season two? You're now listening to season two of When Queens Link. Thank y'all for stopping by. <laughs> you ever been so busy that when you catch a glimpse of your reflection, you're just like, ooh, who, who is that? Who is that? Um, I am a little tired, so I'm going to try to breeze through this video, get it in and get it done quick, okay? I just wrapped up a really dope and inspiring episode of youth development, what's working and what's not. Uh, shout out to the co-host Jackie Eady and to all of our special guests who joined us uh, on, uh, on uh, this week's talk. It was called uh, The Extinction of the Black Male Teacher. Yeah, <laughs> let's just pause right there for a second. It was good. It was really good. If you missed it, head on over to the Youth Development What's Working and What's Not page. Uh, if you're not following us, please make sure that you are you do that. Please make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Um, please make sure that you hit us up on Instagram and follow us at YDWW Chicago. Um, but I just finished uh, that talk. And, and again, shout out to the awesome, we had six really dope, awesome black men um, who are all doing great things in the city of Chicago for youth and families um, in school and out of school, right? We had some people uh, who were on today that were actually uh, deans, teachers, uh, teachers for, almost 30 years in the game, right? 10 years in the, in this education game. And then we also had some uh, two really dope black male mentors who have been doing, again, doing this work for almost 10, 15 years. If I had to guess, um, with them and Jackie, 20, 50, 50, there probably was more than 100 years uh, combined of education and youth work on on that video so i'm gonna make sure to link it below in the comments but i'm really here to, <laughs> to just share um i said i was gonna keep it brief y'all y'all that's it's so not my nature but um i am really here to just give you a word of encouragement really quickly um i had quite a few people on a post that I wrote on my personal page, Tyreshawn Gay uh, Owens. If we're not friends, let's be friends, okay? <laughs> um, but also, um, if you see this video, please like it, please share it, please comment, please talk to me, right? Um, thank you for following me here. On my personal page, though, I shared a uh, question that I really am so just, I'm so thankful to the people who engaged over the course of um, maybe a little bit less than a week. Uh, I've had about 51 comments, people, you know, responding to the question, engaging back and forth with me uh, in conversation. And the question was, what's a skill that you uh, taught yourself and that you're proud of? So what's a self, what's a skill that you have that you're self-taught in and you are proud of? And the, the, just the range of questions, first of all, let me talk about that. Um, everything from being a black mother and raising, you know, a, a child in this society, raising children in America. Okay. As a black mother who, you know, <laughs> who just understands uh, and has been working in community engagement for almost 11 years, who have been working with you for all this time, that even that never even dawned on me that that was one of my skill sets, right? As a black mother, um, who is now, who's now a mother of a six-year-old, right? <laughs> um, but everything from, you know, black motherhood in America to uh, learning how to type 40 words and beating her, you know, the woman said beating her mom, learning how to, you know, typing was a skill that people actually learned. And now we just typing on our, you know, effortlessly, right? Typing on our phones. Um, so I'm not even sure if people are putting that on resumes, but, uh, you know, the fact that that's something that, you know, you had inside you at one point and you, you had to teach yourself how to do it that's still valuable knowledge, right? So everything, you know, just 
it ran the gambit in terms of things that you all shared. Um, and I just Me wanted too. to say thank there you. are people who are really afraid um, to share who they are, um, to talk about themselves, especially on social media because cancel culture is so real because we really don't know each other or maybe because, you know, I knew you in high school and, you know, we don't see each other every day and stuff like that. But the people who shared on this post, I just want to say how thankful I am um, for you being vulnerable, one. Um, vulnerable is not a, is, is not a weakness, right? <laughs> I want to share um, that I'm thankful, you know, for your experiences, for you all engaging with me and sharing with me a little bit about um, yourselves, about your histories, about your backgrounds, and about what you're going through right now um, and experiencing right now, especially, especially in a pandemic, right? Um, so shout out to everybody who did that. Uh, I will be, again, sharing more questions like that. So please go ahead and comment. Y'all know I love, your girl loves a good conversation, okay? I also love, um, as a writer, I love when other people are able to share their stories with me. And I just get to learn a little bit about uh, people. And also, I don't have to talk as much, <laughs> even though I can, you know, lead a conversation. But part of the reason why I even posted that com that question because it was it was a question first and i didn't really think it was going to get the response that it did so again thank you all but part of the reason i shared that question was because <sighs> i need y'all to come close <laughs> get close to me um as i share this secret i've been dealing with a little bit of imposter syndrome if you don't know what that is uh I don't want to lead you astray. Google it so you understand it for yourself and you have some self-awareness about whether this is something you're dealing with as well. But you guys, it has been a rough winter for your girl, okay? Um, and there have been times where I've thought, do I really want to be doing this work? How come I didn't go into computer science? What, what? <sighs> Why didn't I, uh, and all of that, right? But lo and behold, God has been um, still working on me, right? He's been reminding me, sending me gentle reminders just in the way that he does. You know, he talks to us in our love languages. Shout out to an old friend who shared that with me. Um, but he has really been, uh, even though, right? So I, I share, you know, the imposter syndrome piece, but and that as an experience, but I do want to share the solution, right? God has really just been talking to me about who I am in his identity, right? Who he is and why I'm still powerful. So talk to God about it. That's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> if you're dealing with, you know, uh, the stress of life right now, talk to God about it. Um, but again, I am really excited because I learned over... Uh, the course of the past couple of weeks. And again, the impetus for me sharing this question with so many people and learning from you all is really that I was trying to figure out what were some skills that I was self-taught in, right? What were some things that um, just came naturally to me or that I picked up on my own or that I had to research, you know, nobody really gave to me. And I realized uh, not only with the question and kind of engaging with other people, right? And again, doing the self work, talking to God about it. I also came across some really, really old Facebook photos. <laughs> some really old uh, pictures and memories, Google photos, memories, right? And I just realized uh, I have had a microphone or some type of, um, you know, audio voice amplifying device in front of me multiple times, uh, dating way back to, um, grammar school, dating way back to high school and obviously college, right? Um, shout out Denison University, Black Alumni Association, if you're watching, um, but uh it just made me realize seeing sometimes seeing images 
seeing sometimes seeing images of yourself right uh doing the thing actually helps your memory it helps jog your memory it helps jog you know even those uh what is it nostalgia it helps you uh remind yourself of why you picked up the microphone in my case why you picked up the microphone in the first place so um i just wanted to share that with you all if you are struggling to figure out not figure out if you're struggling to remember if you're struggling to remember why you started a thing, um, try to go back and reassess uh, why you, when you started doing the thing, right? Um, somebody posted on, uh, his name is Kent, posted on or commented on my post and said that he had a hard time with um, public speaking. And you all know, like the, anybody who's into public speaking or who's in who watches TED Talks or you know if you're a Toastmaster or any any of these other you know organizations that actually train you on how to public speak how to do public speaking, you know that it takes time, it takes practice. And I shared with him, um, you know, at the end of the conversation because he was giving me some nuggets, right? <laughs> about how he overcame this, right? And as I was reading what he said, I realized practice overcomes fear, right? Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Again, if you are struggling, rem remembering why, you know, you're doing the thing that you love to do, or even, you know, if life has, you know, just kind of shifted as it does, as it seems to ebb and flow, go back one, Go back to um, where you started, right? And try to figure out, uh, you know, how you felt at the beginning when you first started doing that thing, whether it's a hobby, whether it's your job, right? Go back to the beginning. And then two, realize how long you've been practicing it, right? Be realistic with yourself. Um, just like I shared, you know, with Kent and everybody on, on that post who commented, practice overcomes fear. And there was a time where I hated, and sometimes I still do, right? Because it, 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 a lot comes with being in front of a camera or being in front of a large group of people. So some, there are times where I still like kind of get nervous, right? I don't think that's something that'll ever leave me. I'm just a, I'm a the type of person where I'm just thinking about a million things uh, at one time <laughs> and trying to get over, you know, all of these different situations, all of these different details, right? And I want things to be a certain way. I talked about this with one of my good friends, Javita, um, earlier this week. I am so particular, right? Um, so I realized that yes, practice overcomes fear. And if you are, again, struggling with uh, how you came to not like the thing that you used to like, you have to sit down and re remember how long you've been doing it, right? And have you really been practicing your craft? Have you really been putting time in and effort in into it? And if you have and you just don't like it anymore, that's fine, right? But I would bet that if you, you know, sat down and actually took account of all of the experiences, um, all of the opportunities, right, that practicing your craft has actually given you, you would probably find a little bit um, of a sense of uh, joy, right, of a sense of self-gratitude in actually sitting back and just reflecting on how, how, how long you've been practicing this one thing, right? How much time and energy you've put into this thing. Um, there's a sister named Bianca Cotton who uh, actually has her own blog and business called Beyond the, or Behind the Confident Smile. Actually, all of these people that I'm talking about today are business owners. <laughs> So if I've dropped the name, please go check out their business. They're all black people. Please, you know, support black businesses, okay? But um, she, Bianca, really talks about, um, you know, the development of a thing as the, in the same way as birthing a baby. And when she said that to me, I was like, hmm, as a mother, I, I can relate to that, right? Um, there's a, 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 
there's a time when you're pregnant with ideas, right? And ideas are coming. They're so fresh. They're so new, right? Everything feels um, like you're, you're anticipating it. So you have to go back to that moment. Um, and also remember, you know, the, the time that you carried your hobby or your career or, you know, the skill that you used to love. Remember that time that you incubated that thing, right? Um, and I just really wanted to share that with you all. Is there a moment where you can reflect and just sit down and soak in, you know, how awesome and how dope you are? As Black people, we don't really get that a lot. There are so many things telling us you're not good enough. No, don't do it that way. Do it our way. Sorry, white people. That's that's just the way American society works for us, okay? Um, but I'm living in my truth right now. So I'm sharing this and I'm talking specifically to black people. But um, this really goes for anybody, right? Um, <sighs> We are living in a time where everything is coming at us right now. Uh, everything that would normally, you know, be a little bit easier to deal with, right? A little bit easier to overcome. Or maybe it's not even easier. I think sometimes we just are so des desensitized to it. It's become so ingrained in us to have to uh to have to strive versus thrive so i'm sharing this specifically this message with anybody particularly black people but anybody <laughs> who is just feeling <sighs> exhausted right now by their work exhausted by their talent exhausted by their skill please 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 go back to uh what introduced you to that skill. And again, if you are self-taught in that thing, remember the times that you've had to practice and that you've had to de develop and the time that you have spent pouring into that skill and that talent. Um, and I would bet, I would bet my little business, I would bet my little small business, black owned small business, again, please make sure you're subscribed to the SincerelyTyra.com blog. But I would bet um, an infinite amount of money if I had, you know, that type of wealth that you will feel so much encouraged, that you would feel so much more, um, so much more valuable, even about who you are and your identity. So I just wanted to share that little piece, um, that little, what I felt like was a nugget this is my little two cents. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> it might be a little bit larger than two cents. Um, as my pastor says, it might be 10 cents. But uh, I hope this uh, uplifted you. I hope, you know, you will actually take into account uh, those two tips uh, for reminding yourself of how great you are. Reminding yourself of uh, how valuable you are. How enough you are. Is she promoting her business again? Yes. Because the digital marketer is. So until she sails out. And where are you going? And how is this moment either enhancing your journey to get you there? Or diminishing you? To remind you that you are valuable just because God woke you up. Um, you have something to accomplish today and every 24 hours of this day just because your eyes were opened by our Heavenly Father. So.